CBS News Elections Director Anthony Salvanto joins us now to talk about this. Hey, Anthony. How are you, Vlad? I'm like good. You? So, you know, I got, let's start first with the Democrats. I mean, Hillary Clinton has a pretty large lead over Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, but Biden has a higher favorability rating. So what does that really mean? Well, they are, as on all candidates, running in two races at once here. They're running for the nomination. On the Democratic side, both of them have pretty good favorability ratings. Hillary Clinton is still well-liked among Democrats. But when you look ahead to the general, and none of us can help starting to look ahead, even at this point, <laughs> down the line to the general, not. right? You know, Hillary Clinton's favorability is much lower than Joe Biden's among all registered voters. So if you're a Democrat sitting there, maybe the calculus becomes, is she as strong in the general as we thought? That's one of the things I think she has to bolster going into the debate. And certainly Biden starts maybe with a leg up in that regard. So given what you just said, what does Hillary Clinton need to do at the debate tomorrow? Well, besides that, I think the other key thing is build enthusiasm. Mm. One of the things we've looked at, and this is nationally, and this is also in the particular early states in Iowa and New Hampshire, is her voters don't tend to be as enthusiastic about her candidacy, even when they're supporting her, as do a Bernie Sanders voter. But also, when you look at the people who aren't currently supporting Hillary Clinton, you ask them, well, what happens if Hillary becomes the nominee? They say they'd support her, but not with enthusiasm. And that, again, we get back to the general, portends maybe some bad news way down the line if that affects turnout. Mm, interesting. Well, candidates on both sides of the aisle tend to rate poorly when it comes to honesty and trustworthy, probably the last you know, politician that was considered honest was Abe Lincoln, a honest Abe. Um, but does that really matter to voters now? Because clearly people are looking at outsider candidates. They, they feel that perhaps people that are in Washington are not the right person for the job now. It does for a couple of reasons. The first is voters are still in a learning process. As deep as we all are into this right now, we need to take a step back and realize voters are just learning about these candidates. And one shortcut that they use is, do I think this person's honest? And that can substitute a lot of times for not knowing every particular of their policy, not knowing every piece of their platform. Do I think I can trust him or her? And so that shortcut does become an important part of the decision-making process, yes. And the other part of it, though, too, is that, you know, Hillary Clinton has come under fire, of course, for the email controversy, and we've seen her numbers on this measure go down over those months. So I think that's another thing heading into the debate that she has to try and bring up. What about Ben Carson? Because it's interesting, when you look at his trustworthiness scale, the numbers for him look really good. And, you know, 81 percent, that for that's a pretty, lot of people, yeah. you know, politicians would kill to have that kind of uh, figure. So what about that? Do the numbers tell us anything else about what might be contributing to that? Yeah, they do. First of all, is the larger context and that you see a race in which both sides, Republicans and Democrats, have a mistrust of government generally and the people who are in it. And so that, to your point about the outsiders, and we see that with Carson, we see that with Trump, with Fiorina, all of them, that accrues to that a little bit because they haven't been involved and entangled in what people see as a messy process and sometimes a dishonest one. The other thing is that people like his personal story, at least on the Republican side. They like the story he's telling about, about his background, about how he came to this, and that really is striking chord with Republicans. It's why you see in the numbers his favorable ratings are not just high, but the ratio of favorable to unfavorable is dramatic. It's very, very large. People who know him almost overwhelmingly like him among Republicans. Anthony Salvano breaking it down for us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And remember, the first Democratic primary debate is tomorrow from Las Vegas. CBSN will have live coverage leading up to the debate beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern.